Hello, Phil here from Wings of Pegasus and welcome to another analysis video. If you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. On the agenda tonight, we're looking at Deep Purple and this is coming from 1972 and it's going to be their performance of Lazy. And I'm not going to have time to watch this whole video through, so it's going to be in the description as always if you guys want to check out this original video. But let's get the guys up on screen and see how they get on. going to jump in here because at the beginning of the track John Lord who's playing the solo now also starts off the track and it's a real slow burner in terms of getting going but he does some really clever stuff at the beginning playing some chaotic stuff but then interjecting with great melody and it gives the melody even more of an impact when you throw in chaos and then come back to melody but watch it from the beginning go to the link in the description to watch it from the beginning because I suggest you watch that as well just to get an appreciation of the musicality but also the way that it works actually starting this track off but getting into Richie Blackmore one of those guys that just has that distinctive vibrato all the time that technique that I mention all the time in terms of putting your own personal stamp on your playing it just makes the guitar sing in your own particular way and the way that Richie throws together his lines you can tell that he's got so many different styles of playing obviously he can go to that classical style if he wants to but when he was playing in deep purple he'd throw in lines that you just weren't expecting and as we'll see later in this video he'll take you just down different avenues that you weren't expecting as well but then he'll always bring you back to somewhere familiar and you'll see on stage the amount of cabinets we've got going on here because it's just a wall of sound and whilst I'm talking about amps and the sound that we've got on Richie's guitar here in the 60s and the 70s it very much was a case that guitarists had that crunchy tone. Richie plays some phrases where he just palm mutes really quickly. So you get an appreciation of how dry the guitar sound is. And interestingly, on that last lead solo that we've just come out of, he was playing in that neck pickup position and he switched. I think it's maybe three minutes 57 around that kind of time where he switched to the bridge pickup to see how that sounded and he instantly went back up to that neck pickup within about three seconds because sometimes 
With these players, they know exactly what they want to get live in terms of the sound and how they want their lead to sound in a particular part of the composition. And that's exactly what Richie did there. He just experimented with the sound, but then thought, no, this isn't where I want to be, and just absolutely flicked it straight back again. Having a tone like this is great when you're listening to a player like Richie. Of course, if you're listening to somebody who isn't quite as good, this tone is going to grate because of the playing, not because of the sound of the guitar in terms of the tone coming out the amp but just the player's expression and maybe their ability on the fretboard because it is like having somebody talking to you but maybe slurring words even though you can hear them perfectly fine it's just what they're saying isn't very clear and it can be a bit confusing and in the end just a bit annoying whereas when you've got great players it's like having a conversation or somebody talking at you who is so clear and concise with what they're saying and the emotion of what they're saying as well, the tone really does embellish their playing. And that is the thing about the great players. They don't need to go to lots of overdrive, delay, reverb, but also the way that he edits his playing to get the expression in there, to bring down the dynamics, to palm mute, to be really quiet with the playing. And it's funny because at the beginning of the track, he was kind of being egged on to play a little bit more but he was just setting the scene because you don't want to just show your aces straight away and there'll be other parts of this track where we've got a little bit of harmonica for example and Richie really does hold back on that guitar playing while Ian is playing the harmonica because now that is supposed to be in the spotlight and the best bands do this they know exactly when a particular member has that time in the spotlight so then they edit their playing so that that instrument is the focus and they're not drawing too much focus away from that solo section and when Richie isn't playing in a solo you can hear his rhythm is really cut back and almost it's hard to hear at some points because of that appreciation of the band and that band dynamic of having these different focal points within the track. I've just queued it forward a little bit we're going to be jumping into Ian's vocals now and then we'll listen to a little bit more after that too.
And there we have it. That was tough trying to actually jump in at any point because once you've gone down to that really low dynamic and then a band just kick in for the end and really take it to that crescendo, it's so cool when you've got a great band like Deep Purple absolutely laying it down. And one thing I want to point out about that solo that we had from Richie, the way that everything drops out apart from the bass here. So it means that there's now no musical reference point or more importantly, there's no musical railroad that you have to follow and that's exactly what Richie does in that solo because he takes you down different avenues and there's a particular avenue that he went down which was so off the wall that at the end of it you could see that he laughed and he smiled and then he brought it back to the riff and something that surprises me in this video is how accurately the strings come back to pitch after that effective dive bomb that Richie does with the whammy bar because back in these days you didn't have the strings locked in tune so sometimes when a player would go off on a whammy bar session it means that when those strings came back there's no guarantee that they'd pop back to where they were pitch wise before because because the tension has been so greatly affected. Something that Jimi Hendrix used to do quite a lot, go crazy with that whammy, and then sometimes when he'd come back in, those strings would be all over the place because of that tuning. It's amazing that he went so far here and then it popped back relatively pretty unscathed. And just shouting out to that rhythm section, we've got Ian Pace on drums and Roger Glover on bass as well. That is your foundation and they're absolutely all over it here in terms of tightness, especially those bass runs that come in with Richie's lead guitar runs as well, just playing them in combination with each other. So that's got to be absolutely tight in order to pull that kind of thing off live. But the bands that sometimes had songs that were seen as just classic rock and might just be a D chord and a G and an A, there was often so much depth to their playing. And these kind of bands, the impression that I get when I watch these videos so much later, but in the 60s and the 70s, you had to go and watch a band live to really get an appreciation of their musicality and their extemporization and their chemistry as a band and just how it all worked. I'm talking about Richie's expression, his techniques, his stylizations, the things that he gets down on that fretboard that just make him sound like him. I have done another video on Richie, so I don't want to repeat myself too much, but the technique has to be absolutely top notch when you're playing a tone that is as clean as this, as dry as this, when you listen to the way that he suddenly cuts off those notes and there's just nothing on that sound, it's just all Richie and these kind of tones back in the day means that because it was such a clear tone, you got the expression from the player and that was it. That's the beauty about great guitar players and that's the hardest thing to achieve for any guitar player is just to sound like themselves. But thank you so much for suggesting this video for me to take a look at and keep those suggestions coming in the comments below. Let me know what you guys think and if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll see you guys at the next one. Rock!